That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Paint, the directorial narrative feature debut of Brit McAdams, which IFC Films is releasing April 7th, 2023. Directorial debut. Uh, has worked in a lot of other things uh, that are comedically inclined, surprisingly, based on the final product of this film, uh, including uh, he directed several many episodes of Tosh.0 oh and the oh. Cat Williams special American Hustle. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, I didn't care for this movie. I didn't. I don't either. Uh, not a bit. And uh, for a film that's going to call itself Paint, you're just uh, courting uh, jokes about watching paint dry because that's about how dull this film was to me. I hate using the word boring, but I thought this movie was boring. And surpri yeah, surprisingly, very few jokes. It doesn't go in the obvious direction of... Well, here, let me read the basic synopsis. The film centers on Carl Nargle, who has hosted Vermont's number one painting show for nearly three decades, while Carl's signature whisper has long kept viewers from Pittsfield to St. Albans breathlessly hanging on his every stroke, the station eventually hires a younger, better painter who steals everything and everyone Carl loves. That sounds way more interesting than the movie is. It doesn't quite work out that way either. Uh, but, in, but also that synopsis does confirm a timeline thing because I think we were confused about when this is set and and certain uh details that are listed about timing that seem strange yeah the timeline for this film is very off to me or i don't understand it but so carl nargle is fashioned after the uh painter bob ross but only really in his look how he speaks and the sort of paintings he draws which are all like landscape with a mountain and a stream and some trees but it's it's not meant to be a Bob Ross not like, at all no biopic or anything, so he is hosting this show and the net, on PBS and the network needs to up viewership and ratings and get more money so they bring on this younger painter named Ambrosia played by Sierra Renee and Carl Nargle is played by Owen Wilson, and it seems like the viewers are gravitating towards Ambrosia more than. Because she paints a better, like a more broad variety of things. It's also made to seem like maybe Carl, his painting ability isn't that strong. Like he's only ever painting the one thing. There is some light competition, but ultimately Carl is let go. And everything culminates with, for the past like 20 years, he says that his mission was to get one of his paintings into a local museum. Mm -hmm. So now that he's out of a job, because we do see he gets offered a gig at a local college, but they let his ass go because the students find him boring, <laughs> which I think is funny that the students felt the same way I did about him. Um, so he goes to the museum and that museum director tells him like, basically we don't want your shit and you'd be better off donating it to the Motel 6. However, that museum director, Dr. Linehan, mm -hmm. he tells him more than once, what's the image tucked away in your brain that makes your heart ache and makes your soul feel like it's going to burst? So he comes to this re realization that the woman who's like running his show, who plays that character? Michaela Watkins, Catherine. You've seen her in tons of stuff. Yeah, I recognize her. And I her. always usually like her. Yeah, they used to be together. And apparently she was the love of his life. But she, end, she ended up cheating on him years prior because he was neglecting her. And then he had an affair with some other lady. Wendy, played by Wendy McClendon Covey. Who we'll get back to. And so their relationship dissolved. And he's always regretted that. So ultimately he realizes that. But then he, and he paints her a portrait of her. But everything ends with him... Like, I don't know if he was attempting suicide or he was just wallowing in his own pity, but he lights his home on fire inadvertently because he gets a haircut and lights the hair on fire. After and, taking a lot of uh, marijuana gummies. That's yeah. right. The, which we need to talk about how he gets that marijuana. But he lights his home on fire and all his paintings are destroyed. And the media is reporting that Carl Nargle has died. And Carl's like, well, let's keep it that way. So now he's like this famous deceased painter. This is like the very end of the film. So the museum director is like, well, we need a Carl Nargle in our museum now because he's dead. So now he's famous and it's worth a bunch of money. 
And then his lady friend, Rebecca, she's also out of a job. She was offered a promotion at another PBS station, but they didn't give it to her because she doesn't have a college degree. It felt so random. Yeah. So now they're both unemployed, sitting up in Vermont somewhere. And I guess they're just going to live forever in some cabin, the end. That looks like something out of Midsummer, but yeah. Can I just go through my notes? First of all, you already alluded to this. I don't know what year it is because it starts off saying, well, it it doesn't say anything, but what, (laughs) I don't know what year it is. We get references to like, he did an interview in 93. Someone says that someone did something for him in 93, but that was a long time ago. Someone references that they called his cell phone, but his voicemail is not set up but then everything in the film looks like it's from the 80s i i didn't like that i think he's it's supposed to be modern times because even in the synopsis you read uh he's supposedly lorded over this network for the past 30 years right which means that he's somewhere in his 50s i don't know there's just so much that doesn't really add up uh about the timing of things and how this was able to go on that long but if you used to watch bob ross which my grandmother did and i as a child i was always perplexed like isn't it the same thing over and over again but um the movie felt long. It's only like, what, an hour and 38 minutes and it, it feels very long. It dragged on. Okay. They're really, uh, like, the jokes are few and far between. The tone is so odd to me. It's just very chill, but then everything seems so inconsequential. Mm-hmm. There's no interiority to Carl Nargle's character. Um, so, just thinking what would have been better and obvious to me is if, if you're going to, first of all, I don't like these movies that are like inspired by real life people and then they make up these ridiculous stories that people are ultimately going to think are based on reality. Well, it's almost make it so ridiculous where that wouldn't even be a thing. Right. So, or to me, the obvious choice would be like, take this Bob Ross like character who's known for being chill and putting people at ease and make it super dark. But even like the whole infidelity thing is just like eh. like death to Smoochie, I think right. is something that came up like oh what would that would it were if right. we had gone in that direction but we don't and it's it's just super dull even all the flashbacks where they're clearly playing themselves in the play with the lighting where it's kind of all, all aglow that could have been funny but it's it's just not it's everything flatlines the, the only sh- funny thing about the movie is Wendy McClendon Covey yeah who has one good line ostensibly. Uh, it feels like a first draft that needed to be retooled and retooled to get these jokes in there. Because there's another character named Jenna, who's this young ingenue who is trying to court the attention of Carl Nargle. And he's never really seen as appealing in any way, so that's not understood either. But even they go out on a date and are eating, and she's a vegan, and they're eating meat and cheese. Like, it, it's just all so flat. Like, not, none of that. It's like, who thought this was funny even reading it? Right, because if Carl Nargle's supposed to be appealing, I mean, I don't know if they're just relying on the fact that he makes puts everyone at ease. I feel like it would have made more sense to make Carl, like, um, privately very sexual. And that's what everyone's drawn to. But his persona is like, you know, this nice, sweet painter. But they don't do that. Even his sexual escapades seem very neutered. Well, it, even Owen Wilson has a... a figure seems asexual to me like he's always kind of seemed that way so i think that his casting is interesting uh for this type of characterization this bob ross caricature but it it, again it's just like it it was that's the joke and it goes nowhere we also make him uh, again i'm so confused by what the year is because someone he does an interview and the article he finds unflattering so we see him like the next like like the morning when the article comes out in the newspaper That he's driving around town, like, stealing everyone's newspaper so they can't read it. I was very confused by that. Want to be online, girl? Right. Um, Funny moments. Basically, Wendy's character. There is a paint-off where Carl and Ambrosia are, like, seeing who can raise the most money by painting something. That was very boring to me. But then the aftermath of, like, oh, now they both have to paint the the highest bidder... I thought that had some humor, but I mean, I'm really trying to find something funny about this. It's very light, and it also negates what it's setting up, is that her rising popularity versus his, when he has the most... I I don't know, it just... So then that character, so Ambrosia is kind of like a main character, but then she also, there's nothing to her except that she's a lesbian, and she, you know, the plot synopsis I read that says that the better painter who steals everything and everyone... Ambrosia's in love with 
Rebecca. Well, she's attracted to attracted to. So she's trying to get at her. And Rebecca kind of entertains her, but says like, "I'm, you know, like I've never been with a woman. I'm not a lesbian." That was the funny part where she goes to her because Ambrosia lives with her parents, and the mother prepares them Totino's pizza rolls. <laughs> and the mother recog- uh, Rebecca recognizes Ambrosia's mother as someone she went to school with, and Rebecca's actually older than Ambrosia's mother, so that's funny. And then in the end, we see that Rebecca or Ambrosia's now dating an older woman who worked at PBS, and when she brings her home. To meet her parents, the now the the even older lady recognizes Ambrosia's grandmother. She knows Mima. Yeah, she went to school with. So I mean, that was kind of funny, but it's all just so random. Those are light touches. I, I could imagine somebody like Christopher Guest doing something really good. Really, yeah. Good. Um, then we find out that Carl's reruns won't air on PBS because PBS won't air tobacco products and Carl always has a pipe in his mouth. But now that everyone thinks he's dead and he's popular again, we get uh, like a final ending where we see that his episodes, the pipe has been blurred out. Again, could be funny. Could be funny, but it's, it wasn't. It's not, or if they decided to put a different object in his mouth. I don't know. It's just... Can we talk about the marijuana? So <clears throat> Carl goes to a barber, like a black barber who has white client. Like, I don't know... It, it, it was a very interesting uh, situation, I thought. And then Carl goes in and wants to change up his haircut. And he asks for a number four. Because he's we, we see that he chooses the number 12. So on the diagram, number 12 is like a big afro. And then after he's all sad because he's out of work, he says, give me a number four. I don't know what a number four is, but give it to me. And then we get this scene where we think, oh, he's going to come out looking fresh. No, it's just a junior afro and they shave off his mustache. So he looks even more crazy. But then the barber tells him like, here, take this. And he, first of all, he doesn't charge Carl for the haircut. He gives him a bottle of prescription marijuana and also gives him a container of prescription like, or medicinal marijuana edibles. Yep, don't understand, because he resists that. And then he takes all of it. That was so dumb. It's there was so nothing stupid. funny about There's any of it. There's nothing funny about any. All of the scenes set in the barn, none of it. It just ugh. Lastly, that, that was my thought the whole time. Just ugh. Yeah. Lastly, I did think the movie has some good music in it because we have songs from John Denver, Dolly Parton, and Gordon Lightfoot. Yes. That was pretty impressive. Who you kept making fun of? I do. That's a great Gordon Lightfoot song. I mean, I'm not making fun of it. It's just not my kind of music. Well, you'd like the uh, cover of it by What's Her Face. What is that? Isn't it Amber from the film 54? I was making fun of it because it just sounds so silly in this movie. It does. It, that, well, all of that did. Like, they got a Dolly song. I, what I, else would you like to say? That's it. I just was total, completely underwhelmed. I don't know. What would you give this movie? One and a half. Like, I'd never want to watch it again. I didn't like it. I would give it two out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>